gosh, things are getting tough out there for some people and some businesses, and I'm aware of it. I have resisted talking about it because I didn't want to create a scaring or fear mentality podcast, but I also know that my job is to help you. So if times are tough for you, this is the podcast for you. If times are not tough and you don't want to have tough times, this is also the podcast for you. I'm your host, Rachel Clava. I'm a marketing coach and I love helping people ensure their business against tough times and get themselves out of tough times when they're in them with our marketing. In this episode, we're going to go through some things that you can do to react against the situation you're in and proactively prevent getting into that situation again, ever. Let's talk practical solutions. That's what we're doing today. Now, if you are a New Zealand-based business, I want to help you in person for free. Go to Eventbrite and have a search for Identify Marketing and come along to one of my free content creation events. This is all about you having an insurance policy and building a community to help make your sales leads and sales come through on a regular basis, no matter what. Come along, be part of it, ask questions and work with me for a morning on your business. I'm looking forward to seeing you. But right now, let's get started talking about proactive and reactive marketing. Welcome, this is Mappet Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. Welcome to the Muppet Marketing Podcast. I am your host, Rachel Claver, and today we are talking all about how to get more sales when you're in a place of this ain't looking too good. I want to talk a little bit about what got you into this situation in the first place for most of us. I find this is quite a delicate situation and obviously some things just happen. We can have major disasters happening to us that cause us to not be able to market for some time. We might have a health crisis or something that's caused us to step away, which has led us to having big breaks. Or it might be that we have just never had a consistent marketing pattern. One of the reasons that I am so big on consistent marketing and why I talk and preach and ramble on about it all the time is I see it as an insurance policy. It means that no matter what is happening on the outside of our world, no matter what economic situations are going through, no matter what's happening, we are in constant contact with the audience that we want to be working with. We're looking after our email list. We're showing up on a regular basis on social media. We're checking with our strategic alliances. We're making sure we're being proactive before we need to be reactive. And so part of the reason that some people are seeing such a massive downturn is that we've come out of the pandemic pandemic years and some people had huge bursts of time then that they had massive growth. We had some clients who did double, triple, quadruple what they would normally do in other years during that pandemic time. It was gold season. And then they came out of that and went, well, I just expect it's going to keep on going. And it didn't because when those busy times happen, it's really easy for us to drop our marketing, to take it for granted and stop doing all the things we're meant to do. And we stop insuring ourselves for the inevitable lull, the fail, the drop, the change. So today I want to talk to you about doing two things from today. The first is, if you are in a place of desperation, if you're in a place where you need to get sales in fast, I'm going to give you a bunch of options. And some of them are going to be more palatable than others. But look, if this is our business and we want it, sometimes we've got to fight for it. Before I tell the story, um, I'll tell you through these things. I want to tell you a story. But first, before we do that, gosh, Rachel's looping around. So I want us to do some reactive marketing. I'm going to teach you how to be reactive to get those sales. But I'm also going to talk about proactive marketing, the things that we still need to do no matter what to build something so that we don't have to be as reactive the next time something happens. And I normally say if you're in a bad place, if things are low, if it's slow, 70% of your marketing should be reactive. We should be really pushing it through. And 30% of our marketing can be proactive to lay that foundation down, 
Then as things begin to improve, we get a few sales, we slowly even that out to 50-50 and then gradually we maintain a sort of 30-70 split of 30% reactive or you know going out and specifically getting those sales and 70% proactive proactively preventing having to do that again by building systems by building automated marketing by building habits that help build a community that weathers the storms we're putting down great foundations while doing a little bit of renovation on the stuff up top right so this is the story I want to tell you I have told the story before I don't think I've told it on this podcast so I am quite a proud person. Um, I've always been really good at looking after myself. Most of you, if you've listened to the podcast at any length of time, know that there was a period of time where I had eight years as a single mum. I supported my children during that time. I mainly did that through my own business and my freelancing and contracting. I uh, left teaching when my daughter was my first daughter, who's now 22, almost 23, I left that when she was eight months old. So since then, I haven't really been in any long period of time in a conventional job. Uh, When I was still married to my first husband, uh, we hit a period of time where I was seven months pregnant with our third child. Uh, Things had dried up a little bit for me, plus I was tired. I had three kids under five and I was trying to manage it, or two kids under five and one on the way. And he had lost his job, uh, briefly had been employed, lost his job. So we were desperate. We had no money. And so I was like, we need to get a sale fast. So I emailed everyone in my network and said, we have no food on the table. We will do anything. I just need to work and get some money. And I'm telling you the story because I had a purpose. I needed to fight to protect my family. It wasn't about protecting my business, it was different, but it was about making sure that my family was fed. So someone came back, I didn't know them very well, and and they said, look, uh, we've got windows that can be cleaned, which really did not sound like the sort of thing I wanted to do, but I needed to feed my family. I asked my husband if he would do it because able-bodied, and I was seven months pregnant. He refused, he felt it was below him. And I, he wouldn't look after the girls because he also felt like he didn't really feel like he should contribute to this. So I took these girls with me and as a seven month old pregnant woman with two kids running around, I spent the day cleaning windows at, at some, person's, some person's house and they paid me 50 bucks for the afternoon and I could go and get food and the crisis had passed for that moment. Now, There's some things in there that I want to talk about. I do see that as one of the lowest points of my life. This is not necessarily about us feeling comfortable about doing stuff that is going to make us feel great, but I survived. And I survived in a way that I knew I would never have to do that again. It made me resolute to go, I will build something that means I will never get to that desperate stage again. And that's what I want for you in your marketing. I talk to so many small businesses owners at the moment who are coming to me. They can't actually often afford, they've waited too long. They can't often afford to work with me. And I'm getting angry. I'm getting angry because they're sitting there and they're creating courses and they're doing all these new ideas, but they're not doing the one thing they need to do to help their business, which is to market their business, to put their time and their energy that they don't have currently put in to paying work and putting all that time into marketing. If you normally work 30 hours a week and you've only got five hours a week accounted for for client work, you now have 25 hours that you could pour into marketing to turn your business around, but you are frozen and you are scared and you need to stop doing that. Get angry for yourself, get angry for your business and push yourself into action to save your business don't freeze give yourself a day go and get under the blankets make the moaning do the terrible thing not the not the inappropriate moaning make the cry the moaning crying um the crying and really get yourself moving after that day give yourself the time then switch all right now uh, let's talk about reactive and proactive marketing Long-term results is proactive marketing, and that's what I often focus on. I really believe it. It does take a while. I have people in my mailing list that work with me after they've been in my list three, four, five years down the track, but that is protecting me now. 
When things are hard, I still get leads. When things are hard, I still get sales. Am I having to work harder for them? Yes, I am. But I'm still getting them. I'm still seeing growth. I still have a waiting list of people to work with me one-on-one because I am working all the time to build long-term results. So I'm going to give you some examples of how we could get a sale faster day or we could build for long-term results. And whatever you're in, if you're in that 70-30 split of most of my stuff is get a sale fast, you do the get a sale fast version. If you're in the 30-70% where you're like, these are trucking along okay and I just need to start building to protect myself, you do the long-term result one. If you've got time, you might choose one of the long-term result thing to focus on while you're doing all the getting the sale fast thing if you're in a place, because that's what we want to do. We want to make sure we have a third of our marketing time focusing on building the future, even if things are dire, so we can start to move ourselves out of crisis. All right, so let's take some options. So email marketing. Obviously, so many people avoid email marketing, even if you've got a tiny list. Today, I want you to send out a really clear, time-limited promotional email with a very clear call to action for an immediate purchase. Now, if you are a service-based business, I am normally a big person on never discount your services, but you might need to get money in quickly. So modify a service. Don't offer your gold one at a cheap rate. Don't do that, but modify something, create something that's very similar or a smaller part of it and offer it at a cheaper rate. Don't go creating a course. No, 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 no. Nothing that's going to take ages. Just slightly modify it and get a clear call to action or offer a payment plan or make it easier for them to buy. Send out that email. And I'm going to say to you, send four. Send one every week for the next four weeks. We should be doing weekly emails anyway. It drives me crazy when I see marketers say you should be doing fortnightly emails. Weekly emails. Weekly because people don't open them all, okay? So we need weekly emails so that over a course of a month, people are opening at least one. So we're sending out um, time-limited promotional email, or if you're at the building, if you're at the proactive side, we can do create a nurture sequence of emails that are educational and value-packed, but don't always have that call to action. It can just have a hit reply. That is what I generally do. I do still do promotional emails, but the vast majority of my emails are just very simple with a hit reply if you want to talk about this. So you can have both. It means if you've got that steady path of those educational value-packed emails and people know that you're doing that and then you send that promotional email, you will get a better uptake. Generally, from emails, we expect to get a 1% conversion rate. So if you've got 100 people on your list, you're likely to get one sale. 202 sales okay if you don't have an email list your long-term result activity your proactive activity this week is to start an email list all right instagram if we've got instagram start using stories every day to sell talk about your offers, be clear in your offers, give them opportunities to talk to you, add lots of um, buttons and lots of activity to get people to talk to you and reply to you and build up connections with them and sell to them. Again, give them special offers in there. If you're doing long-term results, build a consistent content strategy. So showcase your expertise, build a community and foster long-term engagement using consistent messaging over time and make a habit of what you're doing. Don't do five posts one week and none the other. Three posts minimum on whatever your core platform is and make sure that it's consistent, but you sell in stories. So if you need to sell fast, up the time in your stories put the time in, you'll be rewarded. Use stickers that give engagement like polls and questions and things like that to build those questions in there. So do that. If it's Facebook, add Facebook or Instagram targeted ad campaigns with an enticing discount. So have a discount or a limited time offer or just a book a call time. Put some money into it. Normally $10 a day for your target market in New Zealand is sufficient, $300 a month. I know it's a cost, but it's still eventually, it's still a good idea. If you're wanting to do long-term results, start using more video, start building, um, think about building a Facebook group, start finding ways to use engagement questions on your pages to get more people to respond. 
build for long-term results. And again, like Instagram, keep your content consistent. If that's the core platform you've got, keep it consistent. You can also share your Instagram stories to your Facebook stories. And I find they often get really great engagement on there, but you can't use the engagement stickers, which is really annoying. All right, so that's a bit of social. Let's talk about strategic alliances. If you have got people that you have worked with in the past, talk to them. Ask them, do you have people that you could refer to me? Do you have things that we could do together where we could combine? Could you promote my products and services and I promote your products and services? Find ways to cross promote to each other's products and services. They might not be struggling at the moment, but they might be able to help you out by talking about what you do to a new audience. For long-term results, find some of these strategic alliances that you can use the next time that things are rough and hard. Spend some time thinking about who you could work with, how you could build those relationships. Now, I'm not a fan of people that say strategic partnerships and then say that they're about swapping free services. Not my style at all. What I really want you to think about is how you can focus on building relationships with people where it's not that kind of relationship and it's a true professional relationship where you're actually supporting each other through that journey. Right, let's talk about TikTok. If you want sales today on TikTok, it's a bit harder, but you can still do sales promoting email or videos that talk about a particular product that you've got and have it in your bio link if you've got over a thousand subscribers. If you don't have that and you make it enticing enough, people will ask in the comments and then you can tell them how to get hold of you. On the other side, if you're being proactive, you could start really focusing on making sure that your content is consistent, making sure that it's valuable, that it's entertaining. Use I a lot to talk about personal story on TikTok and build an engaging following of people that trust you. You need to be doing both. You don't get the easy wins with sales. Like I'm just saying this now, those sales, the things I'm suggesting here that get you those sales are easier when we've already got the long-term stuff sorted. So we're going to do both, but it's okay. Um, the other thing you can be doing is looking at your blogs and going, can I put more um, stronger call to actions on my blogs? You could just spend a day quickly going stronger call to action my blogs and then I'm just going to push those blogs out over the next week and they're going to have them in there. It's a bit of a softer thing to do with sales but it's still going to help. The other side of that is that you should have a blogging strategy that's using your keywords, it's helping you um, focus on customer pain points, it's really helping establish your expertise and attracting that organic traffic over time. So if you're in a rush and you need to do it, go through your current blogs and add strong call to actions with lead generation or um, call me today with links to call you or links to book times, adding contact forms to your blog pages. Do that to help increase the sales now but also long-term have a blog strategy. Um, If you are someone who is extroverted and doesn't mind it, up your time in Facebook groups, up your time in networking meetings, up your time using um, LinkedIn or in terms of networking, messaging people personally and building relationships today. Um, That's really important. Like actually have the idea of integration of, of, face-to-face interactions and asking some of the people that you normally have relationships with if there's anyone that they know could use your services. Ask them if you could do that. Now to get that really working well long term we need to be thinking about cultivating those meaningful relationships over time. So that means that proactively to prevent this problem from happening we need to make sure that we're in those Facebook groups and adding value during those times. We're in the LinkedIn times adding value through comments on people's posts. We're talking to people already through DMs so it doesn't sound like it's weird when we ask for help. We are emailing people that we already know and talking to them. Thinking about that long-term relationship is more important in the long, for sometimes now, to build that for next time. But if you've already got that, shoulder tap some of those people. And in relation to this, and this is really important, is do not underestimate the power of a personal email to a past client or someone that's shown an interest in before. Make a list of people personally with personalized offers or incentives to drive immediate sales if you need something today. Shoulder tap people. Hey, I'm thinking about, um, I've been thinking about you and what you need here and I've got this thing and I think it'd be really suitable. Could we set up a time to talk about it? 
They are not going to be insulted by it. Um, if you've already got a personal relationship with you, if they've already worked with you, if you say it so it's not salesy, uh, and they will um, either say, no, it's not right, or they'll say yes. The other option you have with those clients is you could say, hi, I really enjoyed working with you. You're someone that I really enjoyed um, working with and, and talking to. Is there anyone else in your network that you feel that I could work with the same way and would you be okay giving an introduction to me? So if you're really desperate, this is a really great way to increase that. And again, this is a little bit, the reason I mentioned that story at the beginning about me washing windows is I'd put that on a par with that. I would be have to, I personally would find that pretty hard to do. However, I have gone through my list in the past where I launched my coaching course and made a list of people that I really wanted to work with. And I wasn't desperate, but I really wanted to work with those people. And I sent them all individual emails. It was about, I think it was about 14. And half of those people became customers. So it does work as long as it's authentic and it's not pushing and you are doing it from a place where you really believe it's a need for them and it's not just a generic email that you've copied and pasted to everybody in your network. Um, to prov make yourself be able to do that proactively, long term, we want to make sure that we maintain regular communication with our existing customers. Don't just... Don't just do this out of the blue, you know, like you can once, but if you keep on doing it out of the blue, it's going to annoy people. So make a decision today that you're going to start caring about your past customers more and sending them personalized emails and checking in with them and checking if they're okay. Um, I'm not great at small talk. I've got ADHD. I like cutting straight to the test. I find it hard. But all of these things, all these things around that long-term proactiveness can help protect us and help us do more salesy stuff when we need to. So if you're in a stuck in a place today, one, fight for yourself. Number two, fight for your business. Number three, make a list of things from here that you could try right now to up your sales and start with email. Start with email. If you've got a list, start with email. Am I repeating myself? Start with email. And then as you're doing that, set aside a third of your time, even if you're stressed, to build long-term marketing strategy, long-term marketing activity, long-term marketing content download, like layer upon layer, to help build authority and trust, respect and confidence in who you are and what you offer so that next time this is a hard place for you, you're able to ask with more confidence for the sale that you're going to one day need to ask for again. This is all part of the customer business journey. We have peaks, we have troughs. Oh, and one last thing. Next time you're in a peak, put money aside. We should always have three months income or three months turnover there for the hard times. We've had to use some of ours um, last year and so we're building it up again and that's part of our job. Save money in the good times. Don't go spending at all. Put some aside to protect your business. Your business is worth fighting for. Go get the sale but build for a better future as well. I hope that helped. Right, we're all about taking action on the Method Marketing Podcast, so I've got a question for you. Which topic or which area are you going to work on today? Please tell me it's going to be email. If there's anything I should have told you, it would have been that email is the most important, right? So please do make sure that you start working on your emails. It protects your business. Come along to the Method Marketing Facebook group if you've got questions about what we're doing today. And make sure that if you come along in New Zealand, come along to one of my free content marketing workshops to help inoculate, immunize, and give yourself an insurance policy to prevent negative things happening in your business in the future, When no matter what's happening out in the world. And for those of you that really need to learn how to improve your content right now to get sales right now, this will also help. I'd love to see you along. It's for service-based businesses mainly, but if you are an e-commerce business, you'll still learn. So come along. Uh, Eventbrite, Google Identify Marketing, oh, search Identify Marketing, and I'll see you there. Otherwise, have a great week. And remember, fight for your business. You and the business are worth it, right? If you love what you heard today, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you love this episode in particular, I'd love it if you shared it on social media. Remember to tag me in so I can say thank you. Have a great week and we'll talk soon.